Okay. Hello, this is Chip Khan, and welcome to Otherworldly, the Changing Times, Changing Worlds uh, show, which tonight is going to be more of a uh, uh, roundtable discussion. I don't have a specific guest. We're going to have a discussion that was inspired by people asking questions online, saying, I've never done this before. How do I craft a spell? And in order to make it more specific, which may get better advice, we've decided to simply make it be healing spells tonight. And if this is popular, then maybe we'll come back and do prosperity spells. We'll do defensive spells. We'll do other spells. But we are quite eager to have questions as well as uh, as as well as answers and, and of course, personal experiences. Uh, I have uh, <laughs> personal experiences always seem to be the most memorable. Uh, asking my my kids as uh, as I often do before the show on Wednesdays, and do you have anything to throw throw at me to, to amuse the crowds? Uh, so that, well. I didn't know whether I should warn them or not. Somebody said, the first thing you really need to do is research the runes. Don't be yep. using a rune unless you know. You don't just go to the internet and look it up on one site. Mm -hmm. Don't mm. use a book. If you're going to use it to do something, you'd better know what it is. Uh, and this person had... Um, <laughs> They were using algies, which is the okay. one that looks like Y in English and is a protection mm -hmm. thing. And they were using it to curse somebody they were angry at. And the other thing she remembered from it was by the mechanism was they were going to be writing it on their skin with Tabasco sauce. And well, that's going to be a learning experience. I that's that was exactly <laughs> what I said. But she's like, should I tell them? Like, no, no. The, let them find out on their own. Uh, I, I'm not going. I am not going to say that there is no circumstance under which casting a negative spell is a, is in a, you know th there's there's a time and time for everything. And uh, but yep. um, you you always know it comes back on you and definitely uh, want to. Uh, to know what you're doing before you go. And that, that is why we decided to do this tonight because people do want to know and people want to know um, how, how the mechanism, how, how, how does, how do you put it together, especially if you're trying to come up with something on your own. And, uh, and we have some very experienced mm -hmm. uh, people here and, uh, I don't know. Do we have any? If you if you are trying to stay anonymous, feel free to put questions in the chat so that we can read them out and answer them without you having to find out that. I I will say there is no stupid question. There is only this, the question that you never got you never a answered. Right. There is the only spell that never works is the one you don't cast. The only prayer that mm -hmm. is never answered is the one that you never make. You, mm -hmm. the, the universe seems to have a rule that says it can't do something for you unless you actually ask. Anybody want to argue with me on that one? No. No. Uh, but then, I have noticed that. You, you yeah. actually have to say, I need the help, please. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can say, I don't know what it is I need, but I trust you. Just be careful what you ask for. Yes, yeah. because sometimes you ask wrong. And <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. there, there is one aspect of, of magical spells, which is beautifully described in the Dresden novels by uh, Jim Butcher as uh, vending machine magic. That mm -hmm. if you do the right components together, you get the, you get, whatever response those components put together that way come up with, it isn't necessarily what you intended because you don't necessarily know what you're doing, but vending machine magic does that. Uh, Stephen King had a horrifying story about um, a laundry machine 
the big commercial uh, one. Yes. It was oh, brought to, brought to life was... because it, you know, certain things got into it from the various customers who were sending their laundry in and they had this herb on their clothes. They, uh, uh, virgin's blood came on, you know, from, from something and all the right things got together and suddenly this machine, uh, came alive. Yeah, that was from room. the book. That was from the book Night Shift. Yeah, lots and, of short stories. But that, I like the term well, you, vending you, machine you, magic. You missed the best part. It only came to life after a young woman who was a virgin got caught up in the machine. And the sacrifice of the virgin was what was necessary to to complete all the magic that had accumulated from people's underwear. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but but that one of the more. Yeah, but that but the thing is, that's vending machine magic, and the other sign is what I tend to do, which is to simply uh, take my intent focus on what it is that this is what in the new age they call manifestation you, you mm. figure out what it is you want which is very important oh lordy is that important mm -hmm. and and then you you send energy at it and so that that is that is the first to me component mm -hmm. of making a uh, ma making a spell is the first thing you would need to do is to figure out what it is that it, you, you're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And uh, anybody want to? Well, if I may, I might mention how this was inspired for me to come up with the question of how do we oh, craft right. a spell. Love it. I uh, follow some of the rich witch forums on, on Reddit. And one of the things I'm routinely seeing is, I'm a baby witch. How do I make a spell? Do I make a jar? Do, how do I use my altar? How do I do I pray to a god? What do I do to make a spell? And I imagine somebody who has searched on the internet trying to figure this out, maybe maybe read a few books, but there's so many ways they get confused. And even if they could figure out which approach, you know, are mm -hmm. they a jar magic witch? Are they a potion witch? Even if they could figure out which approach they wanted to use that, that that worked for them, how would they craft the parts together and make a spell happen? And so good... I'm thinking in, in terms of a comparative approach to, well, if you wanted if if jar magic is what works for you, here's how you would do it. If you want to make an amulet bag, here's to do, how, what to do. So. If people have different experiences, that is certainly part of what we're looking for tonight. Right. And and I, when we talk about crafting a spell, I immediately think about my own grounding in, well, how do I craft a bookshelf? How do I craft a replacement part for my car? All right. Well, I need to know what ingredients I need and what to do to them. So that's my question, and I think it fits in very much with feathers. Okay. That, that to a certain extent, is a, it's like, say, write, write your recipe. That's, that's what a mm -hmm. spell book is about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, there. as a, a basic thing, uh, I, the, the, another reason to have a spell book mm -hmm. is to track what you did and to a certain extent, you know, what sub substitutions did you make? But what did you do? And then, this is the part that a lot of people forget, how it came out. Right. Yeah. The, did the it work? Comments in, mm -hmm. gee, how did that come out? And what about how I'm going to change it next time if I'm going to? Unfortunately, right. Magical Diaries, do? which is something that came out of, like, Thelema, seems to have fallen out of... Um, fashion and that was basically mm -hmm. not so much your uh, book of shadows or your grimmer it was a it was like a 
diary you would have in a chem lab where you write down mm -hmm. what you did for the experiment and how it turned out. So it's your research notes. Right. Yeah. But it, it, it is very much like science. I think the more people do magic as science, the better it works. Right. Yeah. And I think so many people come to witchcraft and magic and see all these books and think, well, there must it must be like cookbooks. It's, there's a recipe out there. I should be able to find it and follow it. And they it don't realize a that extent. a lot of it, it can work, but a lot of it is going to be crafting a spell for the situation. And then maybe they see that there's candle magic, there's jar magic, there's you know crystals, there's all these other choices. How do you decide what's for you? And then how do you apply it? I would also point that if you're going to do a spoken or sung to rhyme, because that works far better than than a long invocation in <laughs> bad Latin that you don't really know what you're doing. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I like that. And it gets it down I want to say down to the level of it's at the level of cantrip magic. Mm -hmm. We have to yeah. write a poem. But I also find, you, you know, can... keep it keep it simple. So a mm -hmm. short four-line poem where every other line rhymes. So mm -hmm. I think that's a couplet. A yeah. quatrain. Quatrain. Okay. Quatrain, I, I don't yes. know. Quatrains are the most common form of cantrips. That because way. they are easy to chant for a long period of time. Yeah. And and you can, and one of the things that, that uh, it, it does seem to, to work better, I think there's something in our heads that says that they rhyme to, A, it's easier to remember, and B, but B, yep. I think that subconsciously we think it's going to work better. Um, and we got a note uh, in the chat. Uh, Angelus reminds us to find aspects if, and, you know, going back to healing, which is what we're going to focus on this round. Uh, find out the aspects of the healing that resonate with you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether it's yeah. wound, a, a certain herb, a character that's healing. There's no rules that wh on who you're going to call on. So you, you may call on Thoth, you can call on Asclepius, you can call on whatever god of healing you want, but um, or or Jesus, I mean, who is famous as a a. Uh, I mean, that's what oh, he healed his yeah. disciples is the ability to heal, and that's that was right. their big selling point when Christianity right. was layer there. on of hands. If if I have a Christian friend who is ill, I go to jesus and like jesus you know we we're, we don't speak much but here's this one of your one people of yours. they need your help and uh, and so it doesn't matter who you go to but and i guess the, the major point angela was making is start with the therapy or medical aid that you do first but you do it before you get into the weird magical shit yeah the the spell you start with when healing is call 911 well, it depends on the level, but if you that's, have a head cold. Uh, if that's pretty, if you're in bad shape, yes, that's the way to go. Yeah. Otherwise, call your PCP. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. But you always do whatever is appropriate uh, first, because you know never do it instead. Complementary, not alternative healing. Mm -hmm. uh, that that is the uh, you, you don't have to skip the 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 woman who who I got Reiki from. Uh, her son came home from school sick, and she did some Reiki on him, and she said, "Okay, now we're going to call the doctors." Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, you, you do both, and right. why and why not? Because because mm -hmm. you know you you want to to work those all in there. But yeah, thank you for reminding us of that. That is that is an important thing. And that but, partly yeah. may be why people get a little um, frustrated when they're trying to figure out what to do when they do get to the point where they're going to do a spell. It, it, obviously, at that point, if you've done these other things, it's a situation that's been going on for a while and you don't know what to do next. Yeah, when, hmm. you, when the... Um, 
it's like in the uh Renee Casey uh came up with the uh Essiac herbal treatment and only used it on people after the doctors had given up and said, mm -hmm. okay, you go home and die now. And then she would come in, she would give them the herbal treatment. And many, many of them years later came to her funeral because they had lived mm -hmm. despite being told, go home and die now by the doctors. Because herbs can indeed do some pretty miraculous things. Mm -hmm. But but she only ever used them on people who had been written off by the doctors. Now, I'm not saying wait for the doctor to write you off. Mm -hmm. you just you could use them both at once. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is a that is something that that we can do. Um, coming up at Changing Times, Changing Worlds this year, we're probably almost certainly going to be having uh, the Norse uh, Norse working ritual mm -hmm. that uh, Jane got from her grandmother. And she refers to it as the um, as a as the magical cyclotron, as mm -hmm. people uh, get in a circle and they pass energy around, and it builds and it goes around and around and keeps building all the time. And then we aim it at you know there's one person who is doing the aiming, and they and we aim it at the person who needs to be um, who to be healed. But there's a, yeah, on both ends and, of it, or preference. So, so frequently, it's by somebody who knows something about that type of medical condition, so they know kind of how to aim it. No, uh, that is that has done some some pretty impressive healings. But I'm you gonna to, you. But you. What I'm leading up to here is you don't have to uh, wait until the doctors give up on you but you do have to get permission yeah mm. and if the person's unconscious um you can ask their higher self you can give the higher self the request I we want this healing to to interact with their body mind unit uh spirit it's it's all it the energy affects the physical. The physical affects the energy. It's it's a big cycle. But uh, Can I interject briefly. Absolutely. Okay. That's what we're here. We want you here for. My father-in-law uh, was dying. Um, this happened a number of years ago, um, and he was hospitalized, and it was very clear that he was very near the end but there were a certain number of things that had been left unresolved, things that he hadn't had an opportunity to hold forth on before he basically uh, went unconscious. Um, my wife and I, being practitioners, decided, well, this is an intolerable situation and it's going to cause a great deal of chaos in the family, um, what we determined to do, what seemed best at the time, was to provide enough energy for him to come back to his full capacity and then decide what he wanted to do. Ooh, I like, I like that. That was, and there was an extremely interesting moment because he was a mason and one of the things that we did was invoked Tubal Cain, and he heard mm. it. <laughs> so we, we got a really interesting look about that, but he never said anything about it. Um, shortly thereafter, he was sitting up in bed, perfectly coherent, and basically told the assembled family, okay, this is what it is and laid out the situation, laid out his wishes, and then basically um, after that, it was simply a matter of a very small time before he slipped away. But so he punched out and went home. Yeah. But uh, while, he was, uh, while he was talking, I mean, he was sitting up strong, completely sharp and with it, and basically, all right, this is what it is, and laid it out what he wanted as far as how the family was to take care of things, and then he went. 
Oh, wouldn't everybody like that? <laughs> yeah. Well, that was better than the other time that we opened up a, a, uh, a bridge to assist in a lady's passing. And when we reached the climax of the ritual, all of the lights in the hospital went out. The hospital? Mm -hmm. In the entire wing. Oh, oh, my. oh I think oh. you should have put up a bigger, a better circle. <laughs> well, it was just the lights. All the equipment was still functioning. Oh, good. But it went dark suddenly at the oh, my. original uh, and, and Do you have any idea of what may have been the cause? Well, you were the cause of that, but why just the lights and not everything else? Um, uh, incandescent bulbs tend to be a little tend to be very sensitive and a little bit unstable. And mm -hmm. same with old fashioned fluorescence. Oh yeah. We tend to we tend to pop the ballasts. Oh, okay. So I don't know if I it would was that or something was... else, but um everything went black. <laughs> well got everybody's attention. Oh, it was definitely attention getting. D did they know it was you? I mean, because they No, don't... I seriously <laughs> doubt it. I mean, <laughs> there were probably there were probably a couple of nurses on the floor that's suspected. Mm. But as far as I know, we were never talked to about it. Perhaps for the best. Yeah, probably. I would say you got off easy on that one. I did get into a little bit of trouble once with a healing working. Um, a friend who was a member of the uh, same dog club as mm. me at the time, uh, we were at a dog show. Um, I somewhere on Barstow. I don't remember exactly the place, but it was an indoor show. And there was a hallway outside the uh, main room where the show was taking place. And here was this lady and she was sitting in abject misery. Mm. The misery and the tension was just radiating off of her. And it was palpable to me at like feet away. And it was so intense that I kind of broke a personal rule and sat down next to her. I said, um, Elena, what's wrong? And she explained um, she had had surgery at one point in the not too distant past, a couple of months previously. And uh, they intubated her for the anesthetic and unfortunately gashed her throat lining. Oh, Ow. right near her vocal cords. Um, Ow. Oh. It's a voice therapist. And she and her doctor went through every possible variety. I love the hat, by the way. Hmm? Horn, the horns with the Mickey Mouse ears. That's that's yes. that's mm -hmm. excellent. Mm -hmm. Norway Pavilion, Epcot. Um, so She's a voice therapist, and she and her doctor had been going through every course of non-invasive therapy possible to attempt to heal the damage. And mm -hmm. he was taking regular uh, photos of her throat lining with a fiber optic camera, and it just wasn't improving, wasn't improving, wasn't improving. And um, they were doing the non-invasive stuff because her doctor couldn't guarantee that surgery would not adversely affect her vocal cords with them being as close to the injury as it was. And so she was in an absolute panic over this because they'd exhausted all the other options and surgery was scheduled. She was supposed to be going in for the last pre-op appointment in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And she was just, just completely she was practically bonkers with panic and worry over the situation. So again, I kind of broke another personal rule and said, well, you know, I might just possibly maybe know something that I could do to help. And um, mm. I'm pretty sure that I almost looked exactly like this while I was doing it, you know, with the, with the pretty <laughs> diffident kind of cringing kind of thing. Yeah. And she literally, she grabbed my arm and she said, 
anything. It's like, okay, that's permission. Um, okay. Yeah. So I proceeded to drop her into a trance um, using, you know, fairly standard uh, techniques. I did something similar with uh, uh, a kid that I was legal guardian for when he was in the hospital with an acute attack of appendicitis. The nurses couldn't give him anything until they had finished running their tests, but he was in excruciating pain. Anyway, so I dropped him into a trance to get him out of it and then brought him out when they needed to ask him something and then put him back. So I did something similar to that with her and um, led her through a basic visualization because to my sight, I could see what the damage looked like. As far as what I was looking at, it looked like a black gash across her throat. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I led her through a visualization where, all right, you're, you're a voice therapist. I'm sure you've seen every diagram of the human throat that exists. So you know what a healthy throat looks like. What I want you to do is take that image of a healthy throat and imagine that over your throat. And then we're going to take light energy and just pour it through. So that it goes through that image into your throat. And while I was guiding her through that, I did um, some personal energy work that I do involving uh, a maze path working mm. and ran through that and channeled additional energy into her, just focused on her throat backed by her visualization. And then I got to the point where it's a little difficult to describe. It's like charging a capacitor at one point. The uh, the current drops. Yes. Because the capacitor is fully charged. Mm -hmm. Well, when I felt the energy just level out into the background, I figured... Well, okay, I can keep pushing force into it, but it's not going to do anymore. This is this is all there is. And I then consciously um, grounded out the magic, brought her out of her trance, and then said, you know, that's, I hope that works because that's what I can do for you. And she was, she was very grateful. She seemed a little bit out of it just like she was a little out of phase with herself after that which happens with a lot of people who go into a working and aren't used to the way that happens they come back they got to get their sea legs again um or their land legs rather well she called me three days later she was almost she was stammering she could barely barely talk uh she had gone to the pre-op appointment the doctor had taken another photograph of her throat lining and then went to print it out. And as he came back to the exam room, he was staring at the photograph in his hand and just kind of walking while he was looking at it. And um, he, uh, she's like, what's wrong? He's like, Elena, you know that surgery we have scheduled for you? She says, yeah, he says, you mind if we postpone it indefinitely? I can barely find where the injury was. What did mm -hmm. you do? Mm -hmm. So um, she told him. And that meant that he wanted me to call him, <laughs> which I did. Apparently, he was somewhat familiar with the literature. With oh, the okay. medical literature on prayer and healing. And uh, I don't think I told him anything new uh, because basically it's like, well, look, it was her visualization. I just got out and pushed. <laughs> but oh, um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab it right there and say for people who are trying to learn, you mm -hmm. got that that's the point. First you diagnose mm -hmm. and then and then you power up. Well, mm -hmm. you get permission, and that, but mm -hmm. but providing the power is what many components of spell work do. Um, yeah. For instance, in a witch bottle, 
in a mojo bag in in several of these it is specifically uh you're going to some element or some entity that wants to help that I have that, a list that I you're never powering it you 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 <laughs> this is the fuel you're using so I have a anybody list want to correct or expand that so some kind of fuel that pinpoints the diagnosis in a way so if somebody's mm -hmm. having respiratory issues if you were doing a witch bottle you would put in something to do with free movement of air maybe right and in terms of powering i i can totally relate to that because i've told the story the one time i was involved in a working to help someone pass to the other side and my job was to provide power to hold up the bridge Mm. Ooh, that's fun. It was a, a remarkable experience, Arnett, I'll tell you. But that that seems to be one of my basic abilities is that when someone needs to step in and push, I can push. And sense of direction is up to other people. But it's also true that Many people who need healing just need a sense of, all right, you need healing. We now know what to do. But because you need healing, you don't have the power to do it yourself. And that's where you step in, channel energy, whatever. And that then allows the mutually agreed upon healing to take place because the client is involved. They get the energy. They know what needs to happen. And it does. Okay. So Chip kind of says someone must provide the power. So I'm thinking mm -hmm. if we're putting fuel into, say, an amulet bag or a witch bottle, Mm. then maybe well, the energy that one pushes in is applied to that. And yeah. you charge it with that energy. Like yeah, storing that, in a battery. That's what many of the components are, is is fuel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, we've had Star Wolf on multiple times talking about what different types of stone like to do. Right. Each of yeah. them have a, a different direction they push in, as it were. Okay. Uh, and 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 certain plants um, mm -hmm. that you know, especially as we're talking about healing right now, there is a wonderful story from a um, guy who was in uh, what's it called? Uh, was in South America, and he was introduced to a boy who was uh he said well he was healed from uh, he had cancer but um this plant healed him and he got all excited mm. he said well, you've got because he, they showed him the boy they showed him the scars so showed him pictures of the kid when he had a huge tumor and he's like oh this is wonderful where's where this plant what does it look like i got to take pictures of and then he asked why is everybody laughing and he said, mm. well, because you think you can come and pick a bunch of these plants and, and cure cancer in America. And it's like, that's not how it works. That plant wanted to help that boy. Mm. A different plant could be could decide to help a different person if they had the same cancer. OK. And they didn't understand that a lot of times it is the pl the entity in the plant that is that is providing the healing uh, and so that one of the reasons that that herbal magic is so wonderful there's just a certain attitude that burdock or nettle or dandelion has that they they love to throw into the situation and so if you are mm -hmm. if you drink their tea or or you uh, put the poultice on they like to help you okay. but as the old practitioners knew if you sing to the plant when you're looking for it, when you're gathering it, when you're processing it, when you're applying it, it makes it work better because you were working with the plant spirit. 
Okay. Somebody had said, I think in the chat, something about working with other entities. And uh, did somebody, um, I'm so scrolling and not finding, anybody have anything they would say about working with other spirits? Well, I had uh, a situation where I was um, I was warding the property, and I decided to basically make um, spell jars, plant them around the perimeter. Um, I'd had the idea in mind for a number of years, and wanted to be sure that the local spirits were cool with that, <laughs> because yeah. I don't like you know planting spikes if somebody's going to be mm. upset by it. Um, and so it seemed after long consideration, it was all of a sudden the method, the mood, and the opportunity came together. And it was at the um, spring equinox. Mm. Everything came together. Um, and I'm like, okay, I've got the perfect working day. I've had this in mind for a good long time. I've got a goodly amount of the materials available to me. What else do I need? And I just kind of put out the call and various things around the property said, here, 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 here. <laughs> Interesting. Well, I think one of the important uh, things that we need to remember when you go to craft a spell, you cannot craft a spell without involving the entities that are involved or affected by the spell. Mm -hmm. And it's important to remember that everything you might consider to use in the spell has a spirit entity attached to it. So you really do have to put out the call and say, this is what I want to do. Who's on board with this? Yep. How can you exactly. help? Exactly. And it. Once you get the feedback there, you can say, oh, cool, thank you. Well, I'm going to do this, and thank you for being on board with me. Mm -hmm. What was nice was when I, I got everything put together and all of it put in in the same day, right then, just before sunset. Mm -hmm. And so... As I was doing the invocations to charge it up, I felt the magic just really flare up around the place <laughs> and then seamlessly blend into the background. Mm. Like, oh, that was satisfying. And as someone points out in the in the uh, chat, there there are ways to raise the power to mm -hmm. bring that energy to the healing. Yeah, whatever type of spell you're casting. But it also makes the point that, well, wonderful thought about acupuncture there in the chat that mm. removes blockages, helps redirect energy, but what if you don't have any? Right. And, and that's where somebody who can provide energy will be good. Somebody, yeah, and that's somebody where... Or something. Yeah, well, that's Somebody what the uh, source yeah. working does, is it, it collects yep. energy. You have a whole bunch of people collecting energy and uh, donating it to that person. Right. Yes. That, that has the advantage that nobody gives up a lot. Right. Yes. Well, a shared burden is always lighter. Yeah. And I it occurs to me that the concept of hybrid <laughs> strength would apply there, too, because mm -hmm. you have energy from a number of people mm -hmm. instead of only one. And they... If there are flaws in any of the individual energies, they cover each other. So you get, the hot, you get the hybrid vigor there. Yes. If I may interject, when we're talking about um, Feather Stitch, you said something about more than one person uh, reveals a lot more energy, which is true. There's an old author by the name of Donald Michael Craig who wrote mm -hmm. that one person was would be one, you know, electric, and then two people would make it two, three will mm -hmm. make it, you know, uh, double two to four, and then eight, 16, all the way through. Oh, and geometric progression. The power mm -hmm. of two expansion. Okay. The, uh, most powerful mathematical formula in the universe. 
All right. Interesting. Hence the witch's coven, right? Before. You really need factorial numbers to figure the energy on that scale. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. And if you don't know scientific notation, you're screwed. Mm. So, but yeah, the no, idea we've that... talked energy, we've talked fuel. I was thinking that perhaps one of the common components in doing spells, or whether they're, they're physical or energy workings, or or whether you're collecting a physical group of items, is something to be sure that the individual who's the target of the working is indicated. So if a you did a lock. jar, you might put hair in. When I did a spell for another purpose for a specific person, I actually collected lint from their dryer, which yeah. would have everything from DNA to fiber from their clothes. Nice. The main problem is at that point, you might have everybody else's DNA in there. You Knowing, for example, at our house, the real question is, Okay, this is a long hair. Whose is it? Mine or Kathy's? <laughs> she well, lived alone and everyone had their own washing machines. And okay, yeah. that worked. Th that's fine. Yeah. You know, otherwise, you live alone. So you, some yeah. component have, have or some way to indicate the recipient of the healing. That's and an, that's a, that's a we valid also point, have the, Feather. We have the wonderful advantage that everybody has a reasonably good camera in their cell phone. There you go. I'm going to, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to argue on, on the, the, uh, on, on the, uh, the, the everybody because not, not, it, <laughs> not everybody, <laughs> but, but on the other hand, yeah, let's talk for a bit about, um, uh, about targeting. Now there's that old traditional one of, of a photograph, which you photograph. have mentioned, also the power of names. Writing oh, their name names down on big. it. Oh, true a, name. Yes. A piece of anything of the in conjure. There was always that very popular. Take a little bit of dirt from uh, their footprint, so mm -hmm. that you, if you walked out, if you went outside, somebody could get you through the contact mm -hmm. that you had had with the dirt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so even if they couldn't get a piece of your hair, get a piece of your clothing, they could they could get something that you would touch. One of the reasons I prefer places with pavement. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, okay, so come on, let's, there, there, there's, uh, but how, what other ways other than name, you know, writing their name and, or taking their picture, mm -hmm. would you use well, to target? So because if you don't target, you're not going to be able to, uh, you, you want the Fingernail clippings have always been a big one. Like attracts like for for a magical work and any anything like attracts like, um, but uh, another an alternative to a like attracts like type of spell to target would be uh, implementing some kind of elemental that you create and that would be a form of like ritual ceremonial magic I believe. Mm. Oh, okay. So is the casserole done? I suddenly had a thought that if somebody wears a particular color of lipstick and you used that in marking something. Hmm. Mm. I, I know they can borrow their own. Were, uh, I was uh, trying about... to bind Donald Trump. Uh, they <laughs> would sometimes use carrots because he had associated himself with the color orange. Cheetos. Uh, <laughs> so Cheetos you know. would work better. He's more that color orange. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, he but is. basically, any strong association. Well, if you have right. a strong association with carrots and Donald Trump in your own head, you apply that energy when you invoke mm. when you use the carrots. Yeah, please don't involve innocent Cheetos in this. That's just <laughs> <laughs> that's true. And it, Cheetos have no defense, and no no Cheetos were harmed in the filming of this other world life yeah, of, of the of this binding of, of of the ex president. But yeah, it's but but you okay? So you want to you want to first you start out by figuring what it is you're specifically wanting to do. You you can you uh, get help. You make sure you're very closely targeted uh, so that you're hitting the right target. You know you have what? objects that fuel the work. You, you have to have power because sometimes the what the person is lacking is power. Mm -hmm. uh, what else have we covered? You want to conceal that power, too. You don't want to tell anybody what you're doing, not a soul. Mm. 
Okay. That doesn't always work. Um, uh, or the yeah, other way. You it might falls in get place it with there. the witch's pyramid. It is. Well, not, not everybody sandwich. uses the witch's pyramid. Yeah, I, I don't. That's something. Yeah, okay, let's talk about that. What is the witch's how, pyramid? How different systems work for different people in different circumstances. Well, that's a good idea. Uh, because sometimes in it, it it really does depend. I uh, learned a spell back in high school, where you draw a circle and put a cross in it three times, and then you run down the person's body, starting at the the head, crown chakra and going down, and you do seven of them. Sounds Rosicrucian. Yeah. That is okay. Sounds anyway, so somebody had told me that, and I, I tried it, and it seemed to work. And then I did it on my mother when she had cancer. And um, she said, well, are you going to finish? And I said, I, I did. I did the seven. It, it feels unfinished. So I did an eight. And she said, ah, wow, that feels a whole lot better. Well, eight is the number of completion. <laughs> it it does. The thing is that we all are swimming in this vast uh cultural exchange that is modern america we we have so many influences you don't know what your subconscious is going to click on what it's going what latched in there somewhere we to a certain extent we all have to experiment and see what works for us mm -hmm. Well, you just touched on something that's essential for magical working anyway. You've got to be able to work with your own intuition. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It's not exactly a rational conscious thing. <laughs> no. You need to get down to the rational subconscious. The, the, the part of it does not a rational place. Nice. First. <laughs> well, I point out my model of the mind is the rational consciousness, which is where you do all the things that worry about paying the bills and so forth. Then there's the rational subconscious, which is what runs your liver and your heart. Then there's the irrational unconscious, which is where you start getting close to the edge of the void. And I see a lot of magical work coming out of the rational subconscious because these are the things you know how to do, but don't know that you know how to do them. And this is the area where you feel the things that you could do. And that may be a big influence on whether candle magic feels right to you or mm -hmm. making jars or what other, other method of casting a spell, crafting a spell. You know, the person who's had candles around their apartment their entire life may not find that making a, a jar spell works well for them it doesn't seem doesn't ring true but then they find out there's candle magic and mm -hmm. there you go we we have also the um something that that some people forget we can get a lot of hints from folklore mm -hmm. you be, read you know if you know your fairy tales if you know that but sometimes we forget modern american folklore Mm. Uh, as somebody had said earlier in the chat, that Wolverine is a yes. incredible yep. example of self-healing. Yes. Uh, and I know that with with weather magic, my, my kids have used uh, the techniques oh. from the last airbender. Oh, the okay. with uh Superman is is a modern um that there's a lot of modern symbolism and not a lot of modern folk magic uh yes but it's alice in wonderland the wizard of oz uh comic mm -hmm. books uh video games these things have sunk into our group harry potter our group mind there mm -hmm. are people who will use words from harry potter to mm -hmm. cast spells there we practice what Jedi magic. What do yeah. we make then of the Witcher, who seems to be deeply rooted in mythology and folklore, even though mm -hmm. he sees himself as a different kind of witch? And the whole character and the whole idea fascinates me. Mm. Um, 
no opinion. I've neither not played the game, not read the books, not seen the videos. Mm. Well, I, I have played a magical cyborg. <laughs> I, have, I have played the first level of the game, which I got, and I don't know which version it was. I have compulsively watched all the TV episodes, including prequel things like, oh, I can't remember the name. It's okay. Anyway. But uh, it's just so fascinating because there's herbalism and magic and mysticism, and then this complex business of the conjunction of the steers which is, implies a multiverse. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a lot of, lots of chew on there. Sounds like something I need to start watching. Mm -hmm. And it's rooted in I, Slavic I'm, mythology. I'm going to, because uh, I see we're getting close to the end, there's yeah. two more parts of crafting a spell, which I think are really important and often forgotten. And I they got this from the Havamal, actually, when they mm. were talking on how to um, use runes. But I find it un pretty universally um, acceptable. The end, they asked, have you, uh, ha have, do, have, do you know how to do this? Do you know how to do that? And at the end, they basically asked, do you know how to aim it? Do you know how to send it? Yes. Mm. yes there have yes. been so many examples where witches, uh, Wiccan, I guess, Wic the kind that dance in circles will dance a great cone of power up, and then whoever is directing that energy doesn't send it anywhere. Oh. And you oh. go out there into the field, and you'll find this pool of magic sitting there. And and I, I know several people who have taken it on themselves to always go check afterwards. <laughs> not a and bad idea these workings give me hey. send off because, a, get because magic like water if not sent anywhere, sent anywhere will become stagnant and go bad so you need the activation of the spell You when you oh, activate yeah. it you must activate and you must send it and I will often use my hands to that's where you're going get going it's out oh, you're yeah. out of here now and the last one is basically in my translation, it's not in Norse, it's not in the Hobbit all that way, but do you know how to clean up after yourself? Yes. Yeah. Uh, do you know I've how to one check of the everything? Have you put all your toys away? Have you made have you checked to make sure that the energy has gone? Have mm -hmm. you checked to make sure it went to the right address? Have you checked to make sure that you have set it up so that if you're sending something that that you don't need, it's not coming back on you. If it bounces off something, is it going to hit somebody innocent, and then will it help mm -hmm. them or will it not help them? It's it's just at the end, always check. There's a you should there mm -hmm. should be a list of things that you should check to make sure mm -hmm. that your magic is done. And uh, leaving healing magic for a second, uh, I never make any kind of a love or attraction spell that hasn't got a back door a built-in how to undo this mm. Mm -hmm. uh, and that you might actually want that with a healing spell oh fail uh, is wonderful there is a book on on prayer that talks about the uh effectiveness of prayer and there was an old gentleman whose church group was praying for him and uh the and he was on the verge of death and they and they prayed and he came back and a few years later he was in the hospital and he'd gotten another infection and he says huh and they said we're, we're afraid you're at the end of and they, we can't do anything for you and he said good <laughs> they won't stop me this time because <laughs> <laughs> he we really actually... really w had been ready to go and but they wanted to save him because mm -hmm. modern people can't think of anything Right, dying. Feather but. and I have heard a similar story from a friend who had an elderly patient who had been on the brink of death and was apparently pulled back by the industrious efforts of church prayer groups. And 
he was okay for a while, then he relapsed. And when he heard that they were praying for him again, he says, oh, no, they're not going to get me this time. Mm -hmm. Perhaps Same. one of the most important things you should consider before casting a spell is, should I? Uh -huh. Yes, yeah. that's where you seek the permission at the beginning of the whole thing. Yeah. Well, how it's going to affect you? How is it going to affect other people? Yeah. Exactly and, and it is so. often good to invite somebody, some entity that you think is wiser than yourself and may know more than you do about it. Mm -hmm. Which is just about still every is this right to do. Take the, take the um, auspices first and then start working on your spell. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And and Are then, you... as I said, write it down. Yeah. Revisit it a little bit later and see how it worked and what you might have done something different. Mm -hmm. If you, now, I'm going to suggest control, if you use crystals, if you've used colors, if you've used uh, the day of the week, Excuse the me, uh, astrological time, any mm -hmm. of those things, see if those had an effect that you you think might have been better with something else. And um, I'm going to suggest that at the end of it all, okay. You should consider. I'm sorry, Chipotle. No, no, I, I was done. Go for at it. At the end of it all, you should consider what do you do now with the energy that you used? Stray bits of it there. Is this now toxic waste? The components you put into the jar, the items you put on the altar. What <laughs> is it all toxic waste? Do you? How do you clean up? Where do you I dispose see, of these smiling things? Smiling at that. Well, why dispose it of all? Why not keep it? <laughs> it may be tainted by some part of the process. Oh, you're well, gonna grab an earth, sweetheart. Well, any anything is uh is dirt if it's not in the place it belongs. Salt okay. is wonderful in your food, but it will kill your, your garden. Uh, My right. usual answer is what can go down, flush it down the toilet. <laughs> what yeah. can be buried, bury it. Mm -hmm. Um, if you have access to running water and can dispose of it, that's another good place. Okay. I'm on a um, system, so wrap it. Uh, if you Any can't the wrap it in aluminum foil it. and put it in the garbage can. <laughs> okay. Now, what about the idea that you think, well, I don't know whether this is good good or bad. I might find a use for it. What if you store it carefully? with proper intent to say that I want to hold on to this. Now, if this is a bad idea, give me a sign. Otherwise, once I again, taking the auspices, the auspices first or using mm -hmm. your uh, pendulum to get a, should I dispose of this or should I keep it? Okay. Okay. So set, give me a sign. Deeply exactly. ask yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I came in a little late. Did you guys deal with intention as far as uh, how that affects a working? Setting uh, intent, yes. Did you deal with the fact that if you focus too hard on a specific outcome, you can screw yourself? Hmm. Hadn't thought of that. I've, I've had that screw up a number of workings. Can you elaborate a bit on that? Um. Well... The best quote that I have for this is um, for pure will assuaged from oh assuaged from purpose delivered from the lust of result is in every way perfect. If you get too attached on your own idea of how something is supposed to resolve, mm. that can skew the working and effectively keep it from working out in the manner that's best for the work. Mm -hmm. I, I've gotten some of my absolute best results when I have worked, <laughs> well, this was a little bit embarrassing, but with intense emotion, specific limits, but other than that, leaving it utterly open to however it's going to work. I imagine that would be very important. Yes, intense emotion is is one of the greatest fruits of magic. If you if you can cry during your spell, do it because it's going to work a hundred mm. times better. So you really shouldn't feel uncomfortable with that emotion is the 
is the is the seat of the will i i would I believe there's so much energy in that emotion it's uh you can That's feel it when you have a big cry or very big good point um because emotion generally speaking good night, good night star wolf bye bye yeah. good night i i do have to say it's that time yeah. Oh well, it's a little but past I, that time. Quick before I am, you know, before I I push the save it to, save it to the cloud and send it off to YouTube. Does mm -hmm. anybody have anything that they think we missed that some baby witch who finds this on YouTube needs to know? I just want to ask one thing real quick um, to see if anyone else does this. Okay. Um, I, I work at least I have historically worked a lot with candle magic. And um, one thing that I've done in the past, I haven't in the last couple of years, but is I would save up the the bits and pieces or the, the wax that didn't burn. Mm. And part of the cleaning up after the spell work I don't like to just casually throw that sort of thing away, but I also don't like to keep it because I've cleaned up after things like thought forms gone feral. And um, so what I would do is I would combine the leftover wax from a, the spells that I had done over the course of that year and melt them into a single new candle mm. to do a unfinished business spell at the end of the year now am i alone in doing that or is that a concept that others do too that is a lovely idea i think that's a that's great a one. great idea i i've never done any feather is the candle magician here and i haven't and, done much oh i've done enough that the idea unfinished business spell with all your candle bits sounds like you're intense right into it yeah, yeah, all the intent from everything, like a beautiful end whatever. of your tradition. I like well, it. Well, I don't think well, any it, of it, us it have done it. It does sound like a good thing to do at, down. you know, once a year. It doesn't necessarily have to be at the end of December. It could be whatever is the end of your year. Climax you know? candle yeah, the, spell. The Celtic tradition would go for late October, yeah. and, and yeah. I, I am a dark year kind of person. I'm born in January. Fall and winter are my strong times. Um, so for me, the end of the year is usually the start of spring. <laughs> yes. That, that, um, that, so I would do it as an, it. yeah, for me, it was an equinox or sometimes, sometime between equinox and Beltane, I would do my unfinished business spell. So I'm coming up on it soon. Uh -huh. um, um, but my my practice is an odd hodgepodge of um, ceremonial, a little bit of Wicca, a little bit of Appalachian folk trad. So, like, I, I'm a pretty eclectic practitioner. And you're a, you're a mixed breed magician. Very. What has been referred uh, to as a Heinz fifty seven practitioner. <laughs> <laughs> not sure how I feel about that term, but but yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it does kind of describe the mutt nature of a lot of our practice because we do have a tendency to make tutti frutti out of anything we touch. So I don't but know. I, I love... find that. I love your idea of the unfinished business spell. Doesn't matter what time of year you do it. Whenever you feel a need to put a wrapper on unfinished business, that is a lovely. Well, idea. Also, you're you're dealing with when you are taking and melting together a lot of things together. Uh, I'm getting. I'm thinking more. I, I add the concept of homeopathy and and mm. things like that. I have a candle that I started burning in 1970, I think. And every mm. time it gets burned down to the getting near to the end, it's get melted. More beeswax goes in, maybe more uh, uh, candle dye. 
more intention and it gets built into a new candle and it keeps and in my understanding of the way many types of magic work the more often you do this the more powerful it gets if you take water from a holy spring and you use it and then you keep putting clear water in it it's going to get more and more powerful the longer you take it and dilute it and and bless it again and it's it's so even if if there is you know one part per million left from the holy spring because you have been using it that way you have you have enhanced the power not reduced it so that that you're you're in the biz, taking all those other little tail end of spells and turning them into a new spell just strikes me as a very powerful thing well yeah you're talking about oh, yeah. build, ultimately building the everything all at once candle <laughs> can everything do it and and you've got it go takes us back to intent, which is I think where we started. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm going to take that as a good place to end this. Okay. And thank thank you everybody. Um, oh, thank you all. Yes. This this is, was a great one. Okay. Do we think that we should do this again on a different kind? We've been talking healing tonight. Should we do do this again in a month on a different kind of magic? Absolutely. Sure. Yes, definitely. I like that. Okay, then, then, okay, now where is my off button? <laughs>